The promises of God are like bulbs deep in the soil. The promises of God are like crocuses peeking out of the snow. The promises of God are like fresh turned earth. The promises of God are all around us, though we cannot perceive it yet. Come, worship our God, for we know the seasons will change, and our God will make all things new. I'm glad to welcome you to online worship with Olympic View Community Church. We seek to welcome all of God's children to join us in bearing witness to the radically transforming power of God's love. As we gather today, this gives some thought to the promise of a new beginning that we have each day and give our thanks for the opportunities that that gives us as we listen to this hymn by Brian Wren called This is a Day of New Beginnings. Join with me in our opening prayer. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness and water the desert. Help us to recognize your hand working miracles beyond our imagining. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, so that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love for all, and its presence in Jesus Christ. Amen. We light a candle today to represent the spirit within us and among us, and guiding our time together. Amen. In our Gospel reading this morning, we hear Peter trying to keep Jesus from sharing the changes to come. As we listen to these words from Mark, let's think about how we handle change that isn't what we expect or think that we want. The Passion Prediction Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, The nation's leaders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses, will make the Son of Man suffer terribly. He will be rejected and killed, but three days later he will rise to life. Then Jesus explained clearly what he meant. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that, but when Jesus turned and saw the disciples, he corrected Peter. He said to him, Satan, get away from me. 
You are thinking like everyone else and not like God. Jesus then told the crowd and the disciples to come closer, and he said, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me and for the good news, you will save it. What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What would you give to get back your soul? Don't be ashamed of me and my message among these unfaithful and sinful people. If you are, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Today we come together as a community to share our joys and concerns and lift them to God in prayer. If you'd like to share a specific request to be included in our communal prayer time, please leave a comment in the video description below or email myself at vicarglenn at gmail.com and I'll make sure to include that request in next week's service as well as send a prayer chain email if that's what you would like. So this morning, let's lift up prayers for Patty Berg, who is struggling with some health issues. We also give thanks for those who have been blessed with healing in our congregation and our families. Yet we, we also remember those who are struggling with sadness, grief, and other struggles. And may God grant them the comfort that they need and they seek. And we also ask for prayers for the Debons as they've recently relocated to a new facility. May God give them comfort and strength to adjust to their new surroundings. And may God also bless our congregational leadership as they discern God's will for our faith community. Let's bring these concerns and others in our lives to God together in prayer. O oh God, we give you thanks for the example of Abraham and for all the saints who have gone before us, for those who waited in patience for your promises to come to pass, for those who lived in hope while around them it seemed to be only darkness, for those who witnessed to you when it was not considered the proper thing to do, for those who forgot their own selves in their desire to obey your commands and respond to your call upon their lives. Help us today, O oh God, to examine the level of our faith, to look serious at our own resistance to talk about the cross and about sacrifice, and to consider in prayer our reluctance to give up the things of this world, to risk our reputations, our comfort, and our security for the sake of following you, for the sake of witnessing to you, for the sake of obeying you. We pray, O oh God, that you would make us bold in our faith, by our self-forgetting, our self-denial, Help us make visible to all our brothers and sisters the reality of your power and care. That power and care that is so often made evident when we confess our weakness and so often concealed from others when we are strong or we act strong. We pray, O oh God, for those people whose names or faces or needs are resting upon us, for the members of our church whose health is failing as they age, for those believers whose families are struggling to deal with, with youth and adult confusion and uncertainty, for those who have little or no faith and who seem to be lost even though your light shines around them and your world is so close at hand. We pray, O oh God, for those in our family, our church, our community, and our world that you bring to our hearts and minds at this time, and we hold them up to you. All these things that we pray to through your Son, Jesus, who died that we might live, and who lives that we might never die. Amen. This morning's prophetic reading from Isaiah reminds his audience of the ways in which God has redeemed them in the past, and the hope for the future in the God who makes all things new. As we listen to these words, let's think about how God has brought us through our own pasts, and how we look for God's lead into our own futures. The Lord has rescued his people. Descendants of Jacob, I, the Lord, created you and formed your nation. Israel, don't be afraid. I have rescued you. I have called you by name. Now you belong to me. When you cross deep rivers, I will be with you and you won't drown. 
When you walk through fire, you won't be burned or scorched by the flames. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, the God who saves you. I gave up Egypt, Ethiopia, and the region of Seba in exchange for you. To me you are very dear, and I love you. That is why I gave up nations and people to rescue you. Don't be afraid. I am with you. From both east and west I will bring you together. I will say to the north and to the south, Free my sons and daughters, let them return from distant lands. They are my people. I created each of them to bring honour to me. I am the one who cut a path through the mighty ocean. I sent an army to chase you with chariots and horses. Now they lie dead, unable to move. They are like an oil lamp with the flames snuffed out. Forget what happened long ago. Don't think about the past. I am creating something new. There it is. Do you see it? I have put roads in the deserts, streams in thirsty lands. Have you ever felt abandoned and alone, like no one cared and you were left to fend entirely for yourself? I'm sure we can all think of times in our lives where we found ourselves in desperate straits, not sure if things would ever get better, not seeing a way out or a solution to the situation that we found ourselves in. For many of us, the events of the last several years may be just such a time, whether being caught in the grips of a worldwide pandemic or feeling helpless in the midst of political and social upheaval, it can seem like things are only going from bad to worse. It can seem like there is this, the, there is little hope for positive change, that the desperation and the struggle are the name of the game for the foreseeable future. We just can't seem to find a way out. Often in those times, we suffer from a severe case of tunnel vision where we can only see the problems and the struggles that are in front of us. It's a perfectly natural reaction. We're creatures tuned to solve the immediate problems at hand, and our brains are hardwired for fight or flight. If we can't avoid a problem, our minds and our bodies, they ramp up for it. And this approach is what works in, in the most basic environments of the natural world. The problem occurs when we are unable and unequipped to be able to fight our way out of the situation that we find ourselves in. When the problem is too big for us to handle as individuals or as a group, as when, as what we find in our text from Isaiah this week. As I discussed last week, they were people living in exile. They had been there for a generation. Their homeland was gone, destroyed, and occupied by a foreign power. Their their homes were destroyed or abandoned, and their temple, the place where their God, their God resided, or at least in their minds, was razed to the ground. They were surrounded by a foreign culture in a foreign land. It's easy to see how they could find little hope in the future, isn't it? But that's the problem with having tunnel vision. You are fixated only on what's right in front of you. Everything else is in the background, out of sight, and out of mind. In our reading from the prophet this morning, the divine is reminding them that there is much more to the story. God is not found in a building on a hill in Jerusalem. There is more to the tale than the current situation. This is the same deity who has always brought them to redemption from the dilemmas of the past. They have a long history from which to draw upon. From Abraham to Moses, from slavery to freedom and prosperity, God has been a part of their story all along. But they struggle to see anything but the here and now. Yet God always brings renewal and new beginnings. Even as Isaiah was being written, changes were happening. Their overlords were being defeated by a new power, one who saw value in them returning to their homeland and in their restoration as a culture albeit as, as a vassal nation, not as necessarily their own nation. But yet, what seemed as their eternal fate is now being overcome. They're, they're looking forward possibly to going home. Yet they struggle to see things from a different perspective. Much like Peter in our Gospel reading this morning, as well, Jesus is teaching about 
the changes that are to come in our verses of Mark. Changes that are not what Peter expects from his own perspective. He, like most of his contemporaries, are caught up in the here and now. He can only see what's in front of him. He sees hope in Jesus in the present, not what can be possible in the future. Yet Jesus knows that there's more, more than this and more than what has come before. Part of the problem with our tunnel vision is that we can only see the way we have resolved our problems in the past. We see what has saved us from bad times before and think that those are the only methods through which we will find redemption from our current dilemmas. Yet both Isaiah and Jesus are making the point that God is not bound by the ways of the past, and neither should we be. Certainly hope can be found in the fact that we have gone through hardship and came out the other side in our own histories, but we can't narrow the realm of respons responsibilities to just what has worked before. The problem is then we become creatures of habit much too easily. Isn't, that's a problem, isn't it? Certainly if something isn't broke, don't fix it, right? And that sentiment certainly has its value, but the problem is we can easily, too easily, get stuck in the routine and lose sight of the fact that the old way has become broke that it no longer works like it used to. Peter and others of his time yearn for a valiant king to arise and triumphantly lead their nation to shake off oppression and re restore them to glory and prestige. Yet that is not what God had in mind. Something new was in the works, not based on glory and might, but on humble service and sacrifice. The comfort of the familiarity of the past and its ways can be a powerful temptation and obstacle to moving forward, so much so that Jesus refers to Peter as the adversary, which is the literal meaning of the word Satan. How often do we find ourselves doing the same old thing? The last year has found many of us struggling and despondent in a new reality that's not of our own choosing. We can all identify with the hardship of isolation and restriction. Yet we, too, have our tunnel vision, don't we? We only see the here and now, and we find it difficult to see a return to better times, to normal. But then again, it also speaks, that also speaks to looking backward to the past and dwelling in the way things were, much like Peter in our story. Certainly, we can find hope in our past redemptions that we have always pulled through or we wouldn't be here now. Yet what worked then may not be what will work now. And the argument could be made that what worked in the past for us did not work so well for others even back then. Even the biblical record in the, in the glory days, there were those who struggled more than others, those for whom the system, as it was, did not work. Likewise, in our pre-pandemic time, not all looked on those days positively. Perhaps we are called to something new by our God who makes all things new. Maybe the last year is a reminder that we have work to do, highlighting what wasn't working, not only as individuals in a society, but also members of a community of faith. As Christ's body here and now, how stuck in the successes of the past are we? Do we wistfully look back like Peter did and try to restore that former glory of yore? Or do we turn our eyes forward and see what new things God has in store for us? Do we keep trying the same old things that haven't worked in a long time and hope for different results? There's a story of a woman who was going through some very difficult and trying circumstances. She was experiencing major distress in her marriage and her job was very unfulfilling and causing her heartache. She became so distraught over her circumstances that she, she just felt like giving up. She felt lonely, dejected, and isolated. She had tried everything she could think of to better herself, her marriage. The normal things that one tries to, to do to pull themselves back up, even at work, but it seemed everything just turned out horrible for her. Finally, she came to the point of exhaustion and felt there was no way out of her terrible circumstances and that there would never be any more joy in her life. One day, she was sitting in her kitchen, very frustrated and lonely. She sat there for a long time and just wept. And then she noticed a small sparrow had somehow gotten into her kitchen. So the sparrow would simply fly out the door. And to her surprise, the sparrow just kept flying into the closed window that was just above the door. 
The distraught woman noticed several times that the sparrow would fly directly into the top window, thinking it was an opening to freedom, and each time colliding into the glass of the window. The small sparrow, after each time hitting the window, would become weaker and weaker. The woman also noticed the sparrow hitting the window, window lower and lower each time as, as he flew until he got so weak that he couldn't even fly. All he could do was walk. And then she noticed this little sparrow very slowly simply walked through the door to freedom. As she observed this little bird walk through the door, the sparrow began to regain his strength and he flew off into the free air again. It was though God literally opened her spiritual eyes. She realized in just about every area of her life, she was behaving just like this sparrow. She was trying in her own way to get out of the confining situation she was in, and each time being knocked down in defeat, each time trying to do the same thing that wasn't working. She finally realized that all she had to do was do just like this sparrow, to very humbly walk in the power of God's grace and mercy and allow God to lead her into a new reality. How much are we like the sparrow? How often do we try the same old thing over and over again and find yet again the same results? I hope and pray as we go forth this week that we truly start to seek God's guidance and let ourselves be led by the God who makes all things new, who is not a God of the past but of the here and now and the hope that we so desperately seek today. Without talking back, without asking questions, let us move into God's love. Let us go in between with God to offer our gifts. Let us give God our thanks in our tithes and offerings in our time. As we seek, continue to seek to be a place of compassion and support to our community, we ask that you give prayerful consideration as to how you might support our efforts. If you'd like to make a financial donation, gifts can still be mailed to our church office, or online donations can be made through the link in the video description. We're so thankful for all the support we receive, and may we continue to work together to keep being a place of ministry that seeks to promote the growth of God's shalom and love all around us. Today, as Annie shares the following song, let's give some thought as to how we can see God's new work around us and how we can join in and support that work in our community and in our world, here and now. Join with me in a prayer of thanksgiving. In between, God, bless these gifts with your love so that we might share them quite openly with all who need the change only you can bring. Amen. The peace that surpasses all understanding is with us now. Christ Jesus has shown us the way, the truth, and the life. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and reclaim the life that God has in store for you. Seek forgiveness wherever you have gone wrong and work to repair and restore. Turn your hearts to the newness of God's promises and live into God's ways. Amen. Holy light, 
Shine bright in our lives when the shadows threaten. Shine bright in our lives when despair creeps in. Shine bright in our world when the systems of sin threaten to overpower us. Shine bright in our world when evil seems to prevail. Shine bright in us so we may be beacons of hope for others. Shine bright in us so that nations will be drawn to your light, as Isaiah spoke long ago. Shine bright in us, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we extinguish this candle, let's carry its bright light into our lives this week, sharing God's love with all you encounter. Amen.